need to voice their opinions about mask mandates. Elisa Barrera spoke to a group of protesters. What they had to say, still ahead. And some students are already back in class. Next week, even more kids are going to start their new school year, and that is leading to some anxiety. Tips for parents coming up this noon. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. We start with late breaking news this noon. A farm in far southwest Bear County marking the end of the line for some people who have traveled many miles. The swath of land off McDonough Lacoste Road is where DPS troopers caught up with the group who are believed to be undocumented immigrants. Katrina Weber reports that was after a chase that went through three counties. A group of people sit on the ground, their hands and zip ties moments after they allegedly bailed out of this pickup. Troopers with the Department of Public Safety have been trying to get them to stop ever since spotting them in Uvalde County around 8 this morning. Multiple attempts were made to stop the vehicle. The vehicle continued to evade officers. They say there were about a dozen people, mostly men and one woman, in that pickup, crammed into every available space. Investigators suspect this was human smuggling in action. The undocumented persons were inside the vehicle, in the front seat, the back seat, and the bed of the truck. After passing through Medina County, the truck reached a dead end on this far southwest Bear County farm, crashing into a trailer. Troopers say the people didn't stop, though, and tried to run away. But law enforcement officers from multiple agencies were quickly on their trail. There were 11 undocumented persons that were taken into custody. One driver was taken into custody. Troopers tell us when they found those people with the help of deputies, they were scattered all over this property, but they believe there was still one person who managed to get away. The driver, who investigators say is a U.S. citizen, was taken back to Uvalde County to face charges. Troopers weren't able to say right away in what country the others originated, but they plan to turn them over to federal agents. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The latest update from Metro Health now showing the seven day average of new coronavirus cases has slightly decreased. However, hospitalizations continue to rise. There's a look at those numbers. The average went from 1325 on Wednesday down to 1322 yesterday. However, a growing share of Bear County residents tested positive for COVID-19 based on the weekly positivity rate. It rose to 21.4. At the start of July, the weekly positivity rate was at 5.8%. And our local hospitals are feeling the strain. 1,267 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19. That's up from Tuesday's figure of 1,242. 327 patients are in the ICU. 194 are on ventilators. The rise in COVID-19 hospitalizations is a story that is playing out in communities all across Texas. It's leading to renewed debate over masks and mask mandates. Just this morning, an appeal was officially filed against the new mask rules in Bear County. And now a group of parents here in San Antonio say, my child, my choice. It's happening right now at the Bear County Courthouse where a group of parents are protesting mask mandates and the government officials and agencies who are behind those mandates. Alicia Barrera is live from the courthouse where participants say, they want to protect their freedoms. Uh, I thought they were going to come this way. Ursula, good afternoon. Well, right now things have wrapped up. This uh, protest started around 11 a.m. and it wrapped up 30 minutes beforehand. Uh, there were about 40, maybe 50 people here, several children also present, and they were all holding signs, a lot of them with that hashtag, my child, my choice. The protest did start with a prayer calling for a peaceful protest. It continued with parents stating why they are against masks. They say it's not just about masks, it's about freedom. Their fear is that today it's a mask mandate and maybe in a few weeks or months, parents would be forced to vaccinate their kids. The chair of the Bear County Republican Party, Charlotte Williamson Eisenhower, was also present today. She stated she's advocating for choice, saying this is not fine. Mask yourself and leave my kids alone, end quote. But this is how Dr. Ruth Bergen from UT Health San Antonio put it when it comes to parents, children and masks. Talk to the kids about masking and tell them that this is just like putting your seat belt on when you get in the car. It doesn't guarantee you that everything is going to come out fine, but it really increases your safety. And none of us has any problem with putting on a safety belt for a, a kid. And so nobody should have any problem with putting on a mask. 
All right, so that's the perspective of doctor health officials. One mom here, though, Kristen King, she says she has nine children, and she shared with me she knows what's best for her kids and ensures, like any parent, she does have her children's best interest at heart, interest at heart, and that's even when it comes to masks. I think local authorities need to understand that parents have a choice and they need to keep that choice um, because parents really, really, truly want what's best for their children. And their children need to know that their parents are going to stand up. One participant, one participant who spoke up today, she admitted that she's actually scared. She was scared to be here today and speak up because she doesn't want to be pushed out of society. Many here cheering to that, saying they've been shamed for their beliefs of not wanting their children to wear masks or them themselves wear one. And they do, they know that the fear has spread over the virus. So today what they want is for their bravery. They believe that they have been brave in showing up here today, although they have received a lot of pushback, so that they hope that their bravery today spreads. And this was a peaceful protest in the big scheme of things. There were just a few moments of tension with other people walking by and, of course, shouting their beliefs. And another moment that really uh, shocked people was when one of the participants here ripped up the directive from Dr. John De Wu, medical director of the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District. But again, these parents really saying that they want the choice. They don't want to co-parent with a government. That's how one of the parents put it here today. Reporting live from Bear County Courthouse, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now to a story that has many parents and staff members concerned. Hundreds of Northeast ISD employees may have been exposed to the coronavirus. According to the San Antonio report, two school district employees who attended an on-campus event tested positive for COVID-19. Jonathan Cotto spoke with the district about how they plan to keep employees safe in the future. That event was a convocation ceremony held here at the Legacy of Educational Excellence High School. School officials tell us notifications have been sent to anyone who may have been inside those common areas. Two NISD employees tested positive for COVID-19 after attending an event with 500 people. NEISD's Executive Director of Communications, Aubrey Chancellor, says the one-hour convocation was held on Monday. She says as soon as they learned of the two cases later that day, their response was immediate. All throughout last year, throughout the summer, and then moving forward this year, any time that we find out one of our employees or a student tests positive, um, we're going to send out notification to anyone who may have been in that same area that the particular person was in as well. So that's what we did in this case too. During the school's convocation, attendees did not have to wear face masks. Two employees seemed to be doing fine. One of them did have on a mask. One of them did not have on a mask. Of course, that was at the time that masks were optional on Monday. On Tuesday, Bear County, along with Metro Health, mandated the use of a mask inside all public schools. Chancellor says in this case, they won't be conducting contact tracing. Without the presence of masks, contact tracing is very, very difficult. So at this point, we are not contact tracing, although we could change those protocols as school starts back in session. Chancellor says it is very unlikely that an auditorium of 500 people were all in close contact with the two infected employees, but says notifications were sent out to everyone as a precaution and adds common areas are thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And parents might have a lot of questions about the new school year, but so do children. And next Friday, they'll have a chance to ask their own questions about COVID-19 and vaccines. The city is hosting a town hall at noon on Friday, August 20th, and we will live stream that event on our website, KSAT.com. The deadline for parents to submit their children's questions was today at noon, so hopefully you got some in for them to answer. The Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas seeing an increase in clients who are seeking resources for different mental health concerns. This coming on the heels as parents and kids continue to face unprecedented times and another academic year in a pandemic begins. Stephen Cavazos explains why anxiety is mounting and what parents can do to ease those worries. In the community, 
society in general, we have seen an increase in anxiety over the last year. Michelle Gilmet Vaughn is a licensed clinical social worker with the Children's Bereavement Center of South Texas. While the center focuses on grief, she says fear can often lead to anxiety. Gilmet Vaughn believes with students heading back to school, there is also plenty of uncertainty. Maybe their safety feels a little threatened. Maybe they don't want to go back to school. Or maybe they're really excited going back to school, but just don't know what that looks like. And right now, that looks different for local school districts. A temporary restraining order against Governor Greg Abbott's order will allow San Antonio and Bear County school districts to require masks in school, while other districts will not be enforcing masks. Gilbert Vaughn says it's a stressful time for parents and students, but that can often lead to problems. When things are out of our control, there's often chaos surrounding that. And kids do not thrive well in chaos. She reminds parents to keep an eye on how their kids are reacting to all that uncertainty and how they feel both emotionally and physically. A lot of racing thoughts, feeling restless, headaches and stomach aches that are really hard to explain. Gilmet Vaughn says those feelings can be a sign of anxiety. However, she encourages parents to keep the lines of communication open and for kids to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. And we do have more information and helpful techniques that you can try at home. All you need to do is head over to our website, ksat.com. Our community continues to see a blood shortage amid the pandemic. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says it only has enough supply to last about a day and a half. And that is why they are having a blood drive today. If you want to help out and donate, register online. Then you can go to the John Igo Library on Kyle Seal Parkway. That's on the northwest side. It starts at 1 this afternoon and it ends at 6 this evening. And as added incentive, each blood donation collected at this drive will result in a $10 awarded to the school in District 8. You can make your appointment online, southtexasblood.org slash SA Challenge. The website is listed on your screen there. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says these blood drives are important because hospitals Blood orders continue to outpace blood donations. Well, we got some rain chances and temperatures that are not going to be too awfully hot. Good looking weekend forecast that's coming up. And also coming up, Trey Jones had a huge night last night for the Spurs and his teammates showing a lot of love after the game. Larry Mears with more on that coming up. And a new mural is on display. How the community helped to make this happen and where you can find it after the break. All around the Alamo City, you're going to find colorful public art on display. It's awful nice. Well, now our community is a little more vibrant with some new additions, new murals. The San Antonio Museum of Art unveiling the first of three community inspired murals. You can find uh, it at Tony G's Soul Food. That's in the 900 block of South Hackberry. The artwork made by local artists as part of the Art Bridges Foundation grant that the uh, San Antonio Museum of Art recently received. The purpose of the initiative is to celebrate the importance of community through the arts. The first mural created in part using feedback from the East Side community. It was really wonderful just to uh, try to record what they wanted to see in their neighborhood. So I think we were able to do that. So we have two portraits, one of Miles Davis behind me. On the other side, we have Eda James. And Miss James used to play uh, in different venues over here on the east side. Back in May of 2021, SAMA announced a call for artists to participate in the mural initiative. And in July of 2021, members of the San Antonio community voted on their favorite concept for each mural. Outside with live cam, typical day this week, and it's Mike Osterhage today. We're kind of running the gamut of the weather department. Are we? It was Mike. Well, we've had Justin's <laughs> usually here, but we've had Sarah, and we've had It's It's like a, sa a sample six-pack, you know? Yeah. You know, just a, a little bit of everything. A little we, bit of everything. Yeah, you can't get too used to Justin. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Liven right. it up, Mike. <laughs> Come up with some reason for it. 88 degrees right now. Dew point, humidity uh, still up there. We had plenty of it this morning with some patches of fog. We're going to hit a high temperature today, 94 which is about three below what you would expect this time of year. And uh, the aquifer did drop down another six tenths of a foot in this morning's readings and moderate amount of mold. Hey, fantastic news because take a look at radar right now. We're already starting to see some of these showers and rain chances are going to be creeping up and up. It's gone through the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes.
Okay, we can't say cut and paste. No, can't say that one anymore. Can't say ditto day. No, so All what right. can you say? Well, I don't know. Mike, you got what, one? We got one? Well, because it's not really cut and paste. I mean, as far as below normal temperatures and, you know, un August like weather, I guess it's nice that we're cutting and pasting that. So. Yeah. And we're also pasting in some raindrops, too. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Now, now that's there's, different. There's, we yeah. need that. I don't know if you can paste in raindrops. It's kind of a you know oxymoron. So yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, it is uh, great to see that we already have something showing up on radar right now. This morning, we had a lot more sunshine than the past couple of mornings. There were still a couple of patches of fog here and there, which you can see in this picture, a little bit of a, uh, a foggy start, but all those clear skies. And then all these clouds started to move on in here. Kind of a pretty picture, though. Look at those beautiful blue skies in behind all those clouds. And this is what it looks like on the uh, visible satellite picture. A lot of these just little uh, kind of popcorn type clouds. But then you go down to the southeast and those are some bigger cloud tops. And notice how everything. These showers, which are showing up on radar right now, will continue their trek up to the northwest. Best odds of rain, kind of goes without saying, are going to be down here to the southeast uh, throughout the rest of today. But notice how we've got a couple of uh, lightning strikes that have been picked up around here. So, uh, you know, brief downpour, decent downpour here and there. It's not going to be a huge rain event, but as time rolls on in the next couple of days, we are going to see those rain chances start to go up little bits each and every day. Here's the uh, computer model through the rest of today and yeah, it's got a couple of those showers and you know here and there they will start to die down once the uh, the sun goes down and then tomorrow we are going to be starting off with some clouds, our usual morning clouds and then we will see a few more uh, showers around here throughout the day tomorrow. Now as far as temperatures yesterday we hit 95 the past the previous couple of days, you know, it was Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday were almost identical Tuesday and Wednesday were identical 96 each and every day. And then yesterday had those couple of extra clouds out there. So that kept temperatures at 95. The normal average high temperature we're in still in the hottest part of the year as far as highs are concerned is 97. So we stayed two below that, which well, doesn't seem like a whole lot, but we'll take anything we can get. And today. I think with the extra cloud cover around here, we are going to be staying slightly below that even. So we shave off another degree, about 94, low to mid 90s around the area. We'll still have heat index readings up around 100, uh, getting into the low hundreds around a good chunk of the area. But nothing that's just going to be outrageous. And temperatures, you know, shave off another couple of degrees tomorrow, shave off one or two more on Sunday. And then as that happens, you take the rain chances and just bump them up a little bit each and every day. 94 degrees for a high temperature today. A couple of those showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Obviously, the best chances for any rain are going to be down to the uh, south and east. And then tomorrow, still 94, 93 on Sunday and 40% uh, chance for some showers and storms. And even a couple of lingering ones that are going to be sticking around here in toward the uh, first part of next week. Yeah, just looking at this seven day, it's like this is the middle of August. We haven't seen anything like this in a long, long time. It is wonderful. No complaints, Mike. No, oh, no, not at all. Spurs aren't complaining. <laughs> Trey Jones looks like a seasoned veteran. Trey Jones is definitely earning himself more playing time come next regular season. He put on a show yesterday in Las Vegas against the uh, Hornets, right? Yeah, they yeah. show the Hornets. Trey is clutch. Look at that. Double clutch layup for a game winner. Plus, last night we had two NFL exhibition games, including the Steelers and Eagles. Coming up. And have an opportunity to play in a summer league. <laughs> Joshua Primo and Keldon Johnson dump water on their teammate Trey Jones after his huge summer league game at Big Board Sports. That is a 
way to celebrate. Spurs second year guard Trey Jones was cash money in Las Vegas yesterday, leading the Spurs to a 106-105 win against Charlotte. Jones scored a game high 34 points to go with nine assists and eight rebounds, and he came up clutch in the final seconds of regulation. Fourth quarter, down one, Jones drives, hangs, double clutch, and hits a tough layup with the defender all over him, and the Spurs lead 106-105 with 1.6 seconds to go. Then on the defensive end, he comes up with a steal to seal the deal, and the Spurs pick up their first summer league dub. Here's Trey on his game-winning shot. Just get a bucket um, is, is all that's going through my head. Um, you know, we had it rolling for most of the game, and um, at that point, um, I felt confident that, you know, no one out there uh, was able to guard me. Um, there, there was a lot of fake pressure and a lot of fake hype that they were doing, and um, so I knew that whoever was in front of me was going to get penalized for that. Yeah, Trey was terrific all night or all day, I guess. But he just does a good job, like getting downhill, playing at his pace. Um, he has such good body control when he drives into the lane to, you know, shield off those bigger defenders with long, you know, long shot blockers. Spurs will take on the Nets in Las Vegas on Sunday at 5 p.m. local time. The Spurs young forward Keldon Johnson held a Zoom session with the media yesterday afternoon to recap its Olympic experience. The U.S. men's and national team beat France 87-82 in the gold medal game, and Keldon was thrilled to win gold and was equally as happy for Coach Pop. Seeing uh, how much time and hard work he put into it, you know, and um, you could tell he wanted it so bad. And just to see the relief off his face uh, and him being able to smile after it was over, you know, it was it was nice. Johnson said pop coach Team USA the exact same way he does the Spurs. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. A preseason NFL action football from last night. Pittsburgh of Philadelphia third quarter. Pittsburgh is on the comeback trail. Down 16 to 7. Dwayne Haskins steps up to avoid the rush, then hooks up with Anthony Johnson for a 22 yard touchdown. And the Steelers are down two. Later in the third, Jalen Samuels fights in for a one yard touchdown. And the lead for good. Steelers won 24 16, coming back from a 13 0 hole. New England at Washington, 117 left in the game when the Pats put this one on ice. Thanks to running back Ramondre Stevenson, he breaks a tackle, then goes 91 yards for a touchdown. The rookie had 10 carries for 127 yards and two touchdowns, and New England wins it 22-13, and actually Washington was at New England. Either way, it's just exhibition football. Washington looked like Washington. But awesome. Love football. You, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm not, uh, Cowboys play tonight, right? They do. Yeah. And we'll be talking about that at 1230. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. A comedian proving he'll do anything to get a laugh. How Jay Leno was able to put on a daring show for his friends, popping up outside of the cockpit of a plane. That's coming up in the next half hour. And between work and school, we use the internet a lot. And access has become a necessity. So. If your monthly bill is a little too much for your wallet, there's a new program that could offer some relief. Today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris explains how you could get a discount on your monthly bill or no-cost internet for your family. The security situation in Afghanistan continuing to deteriorate as the Biden administration pushes forward the withdrawal of troops from that country by the end of the month. But the Taliban is gaining ground at a rapid pace, seizing regional capital after regional capital. ABC's Faith Abube reports the Pentagon now sending thousands of American troops back into the country to help embassy staff and others who are trying to leave. About 3,000 U.S. troops quickly heading back into Afghanistan in an aggressive push to remove a number of U.S. embassy staff as Taliban fighters close in on the nation's capital city of Kabul. The administration refusing to call the mission an evacuation. We believe this is the prudent thing to do given the rapidly deteriorating security situation uh, in and around uh, Kabul. The Taliban now just 80 miles away from the capital. Overnight, violent clashes south in Kandahar. Taliban forces now taking over Afghanistan's second largest city. They don't want another Benghazi where they actually see the U.S. Embassy 
overrun and U.S. citizens either captured or killed. Even before this week's dramatic developments, the U.S. military had determined the nation's capital could come under attack within weeks. The militant group has already captured three major cities in the last 24 hours and at least 15 provincial capitals in one week. It is a very sad and dire situation. Earlier this week, President Biden saying he does not regret the decision to quickly withdraw American troops from Afghanistan by the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, which is the reason the U.S. entered the country in the first place. We trained and equipped with modern equipment over 300,000 Afghan forces. They've got to fight for themselves. Fear and desperation now among Afghan interpreters and others with ties to the U.S. presence there, as the Taliban now controls more than two-thirds of the country. They know that everything that they know, they know and they have and they have gained is at the verge of shattering should the Taliban come back to power. And here in Washington, GOP leader Mitch McConnell, who opposed the troops withdrawal under a deal done by former President Donald Trump, also slamming the Biden decision. Overnight, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi asking the administration to brief Congress on the developing situation. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The Biden administration believing Russia is already actively engaged in trying to influence next year's midterm elections. President Joe Biden telling the intelligence community two weeks ago that he received a new update about Russian meddling. One official says Moscow's meddling now goes well beyond influencing elections, though. According to CNN, operatives there are reportedly working to embed disinformation on social media on topics ranging from vaccines to Black Lives Matter. The Treasury Department sanctioned 32 Russian groups and individuals back in April for their efforts to try to influence the 2020 election. Outside with live cam, pretty much this week we've been hitting Pete and repeat. Yeah. But do we hit Pete or repeat today? Uh, neither, it's like down a little bit, you know. Oh. It of a repeat of yesterday. We've got a few more clouds hanging around here. I think that'll shave a degree off temperatures, but also the difference is we've got a few more showers out there. We're going to look at radar in one moment, but uh, we had more clear skies earlier this morning. Now, as you can see, if you look at those graphics that uh, this nice little picture out there that yeah, clouds have started to fill in a bit more 88 degrees and the dew point, the amount of moisture, we kind of measure moisture in the atmosphere is at 72. That has dropped somewhat from earlier this morning, which is usually the case that it does uh, tend to ease off slightly in the afternoon. Not a heck of a lot out there. Again, most of it is confined down here along the uh, the coastal plain. Even some uh, fairly decent thunderstorms are starting to pop up. And as the afternoon heats up, we'll see more of these. And they're going to try and push a little further to the northwest. It's going to be tougher today, but over the next couple of days, rain chances will tend to increase. Call it uh, a 30% chance for showers and maybe a thunderstorm tomorrow, primarily up to the north. And then on Sunday is going to be a better chance for some of that rain. And then these temperatures, again, to put it in perspective, the average high this time of year is 97 degrees. We're not very close to that at all. And we may not hit an average high temperature till perhaps the middle part of next week. Closer look at the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, Mike, thank you. Wildfires still threatening communities in several states. In Montana, firefighters are scrambling to save hundreds of homes near the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation. Thousands of people had to leave their homes. The flames also threatening grasslands that are crucial for cattle ranchers. In California, crews made more progress. The Dixie fire that virtually destroyed the Sierra Nevada town of Greenville is now about 31% contained. Fire officials say Northern California will see dangerous fire weather Friday today. That includes a chance of lightning. You're probably going to think this is faked. It's Photoshop or something. But fasten your seatbelt how this comedian was able to pull off a daring stunt mid-flight. And a field of dreams came to life last night in Iowa. Kevin Costner's movie turned into an incredible reality. Larry Ramirez with that, coming up in sports. Samuel L. Jackson taught to watch out for snakes on a plane, but you might want to look out for comedians as well. Jay Leno surprised some friends by popping up outside of the cockpit on a plane while it was in flight. Hmm. A CNN's Ginny Mose explained how he did it. Flying over the ocean off the coast of California. Is it a bird? 
Is it a white fluffy cloud? No, it's Jay Leno? <laughs> the former host of The Tonight Show appeared to be hanging out midair and pretended to climb towards the cockpit. Fake, you say? It's not a fake, it's real. Leno says the plane at Grumman Albatross was flying 147 miles per hour when he ventured outside to get a laugh from his buddies. <laughs> Leno told the host of Spike's car radio podcast that he was... Just being stupid. Move over, Tom Cruise, clinging to an Airbus. Cruise himself, not a stuntman. Open the door! In Mission Impossible, for Leno, it was Mission Impossible not to ham it up, trying to crack up his buddies by surprising them using a sort of secret hatch. The nose opens from the inside, so yes. I, I climbed out on here. One of the pilots demonstrated the hatch up by the nose cone. You don't need to be tethered in. They say it's safer than it looks. From the cockpit, you end up resembling... With Jay Leno, like, a, like a, an ornament on the front of the plane. <laughs> One Instagram poster asked, wasn't this a Twilight Zone episode? When William Shatner, flying through a storm, spotted a creature out on the wing... There were no flight attendants to call when Jay Leno popped up. There's a man out there. What? Look, look, he's crawling on... Leno may be in the twilight of his career, but he still knows how to land. A practical joke. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. It's all fun and games until a seagull hits you in the head. Wow. Ah, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Wasn't that a great Twilight Zone, though? Oh, yeah, all three of us. Yeah. In the studio, remembered it well. It's a classic. Yep, those old ones were, were wonderful. All right, looking at the tropics, we still have, well, it's now tropical depression. Fred's been that way for a while. That's going to continue heading up in toward Florida. And right behind that, we now have tropical uh, depression number seven. And if that gains a little bit of strength, which it looks like it will, it's going to become grace. Where is that headed? Find out and find out more on the weekend forecast. And those rain chances, wonderful details coming up. I know we like these cooler temperatures, but I guess we could use a little rain. Wouldn't hurt a little. You know, it, we've little. been so lucky all summer long, really. I, I'm hearing it from one end of our community to another, how awesome it looks out there with that green grass. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Everything is nice. And green. But, you know, it's funny how quickly yes. the grass does not stay green. <laughs> when you don't get a lot of rain around here because we had, you know, obviously in May and then when we were, uh, the, what, earlier in July had all that rain and we had a couple of uh, opportunities for it around here as well. Let me get my, hang on one second, I got to do one thing to my computer, so let me do this and get this thing fired up here and we can get talking about it. But yeah, there is some rain that's showing up on radar as of right now. As you can see, it is beautiful out there and yeah, that's going to continue with some of these showers will work their way up to the uh, northeast a bit more and, or northwest, pardon me, and we'll see some of these showers and thunderstorms. The odds of rain today, 20%, a little bit better, obviously, further on down to the uh, the south and the east. And, you know, it's going to be kind of tough for these to kind of move up here further up to the north. So here's what the uh, computer model looks like. And it does have some of these showers again. You know, Sure, one or two of them may pop up a little further off to the northwest. We'll also have a few more clouds around here, and that's what I'm banking on to keep temperatures down another degree. So, you know, 96 a couple of days ago. Then we we're at 95 yesterday, 94 today, and we'll stay a few degrees below the average high temperature, the uh, 97, which is, the, again, we're in the hottest part of the year as of right now as far as the historical temperatures for the uh, highs. Now tomorrow we start off with a few shower, a few clouds around here and then in the afternoon we'll see a few more showers developing and especially up here to the north and so that's where obviously better rain chances are and then all this is going to sort of drift down to the south somewhat as we go into Sunday and this is going to be the best chance for some of these showers and even a couple of thunderstorms scattered about the area. Call it a 
Uh, right now, 40% chance for some rain on Sunday, and obviously with more clouds hanging around here, that will help keep temperatures down somewhat. And then even going into Monday in the afternoon hours, I think we'll still see uh, at least a shower or two around here, just the, the chance of it. So once again, here is a tropical depression Fred. You know, the other day it was just a very minimal tropical storm and it moved across Hispaniola and then into Cuba. And it's big, big rain producer. And again, you know, a lot of people get caught up. Well, is it a hurricane or tropical storm, tropical storm or depression? So a difference of, well, if it gains four miles per hour in, in sustained winds, it'll become a tropical storm. That really doesn't matter. It's still a huge rain producer there in Cuba, and this is going to continue to move right up the west coast of Florida. And then as we get into the middle part of next week, it is going to be taking a turn up there to the northeast and going in toward the, uh, the Tennessee Valley. So that's going to be a big rain producer well off there in the Tennessee Valley. Then on, again, on the heels of that, here is tropical depression number seven. That's going to be taking a similar path right across the uh, greater Antilles. However, right now it looks like it's going to be curving just before it hits Florida and then heading up probably in toward the Carolinas unless it gets even beyond that shoved off into the uh, the North Atlantic. But again, neither one of these systems are going to have any uh, any effect on our weather at all. 94 degrees today, a couple of showers out there especially off to the east and to the southeast, even a thunderstorm thrown in. Then over the next seven days, good looking weekend. I mean, this is the middle of August. We have these temperatures that are in the low to mid 90s and a couple of showers and thunderstorms around here. Even a few leftovers into the uh, first part of next week and temperatures will still be only, I say only, but only 95 by the middle of next week. And ain't bad. Yet, like I said, nobody's complaining. Nope. Not, not one. Pretty nice weather. Pretty nice weather for last night's Field of Dreams game. Oh, Kevin Costner was there. It was no. absolutely. If you did, you ever see that movie? Oh yeah. Okay. Did you no watch complaints the game last night? there. Not a one. Did you watch the movie? <laughs> did you watch the game last night, or did you? I watched part of it. Part of it. It was yeah. very. Cool. Was that incredible or what? It was really cool. Absolutely. Incredible. I wish I saw Great more idea. of the pregame buildup. Yeah. You know, because I was busy doing my stuff, my show. But yeah. that pregame that I saw all the highlights of it, man, that was really cool with the players walking out from the cornfield onto the field behind Kevin Costner. Pretty darn cool. But hey, coming up, we're also going to talk about the Cowboys at the Cardinals tonight. And Coach McCarthy says after this game, it's all about a transition period and Titans wide receiver and John Jay grad Josh Reynolds is coming back from an injury coming up.